does WWE have a Charlotte Flair problem? I would do the sort of <laughs> Omni Flair joke, but I can't do that unless it's an edited green screen format video. I'm Ollie Davis. I'm joined by Luke Owen. Welcome to the Wrestle Talk review podcast of last night's episode of Raw, where we're opening on. A d- First off, I think WWE this week and in the weeks beforehand, have done a stellar job with their women's division, especially since the since Sunday night's NXT TakeOver and the previous Friday SmackDown, where well, all of a sudden we have Asuka as Raw Women's Champion, Bayley as SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley and Sasha as the Women's Tag Team Champions, and now Io Shirai as NXT Women's Champion. What a time to be a wrestling fan in WWE. And I think that's the best use of women in any major wrestling promotion in the world. Me and Luke love AEW. They pay the checks. Cheers, Tony. But at the end of the day, we say it week after week. They have women's wrestling on there and it's very good. But does the company actually treat it to the same level as tag team and men's singles wrestling? I don't think even close. So full credit to WWE, who opened this episode with a cracking little uh, three, three-way three tag, uh, and then main evented the show as they should have done last week with Asuka versus Charlotte in a rematch. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying. I've seen a lot of criticism of how the main event w- went down, and that is Charlotte won again even though she lost the belt the previous night, which she didn't even put anyone over that, you know, it was, it was Rhea Ripley who got pinned, not Charlotte. So what is the point? That's what Luke and Adam asked yesterday in their NXT review of that takeover. And now Charlotte's just beating more people. And I get that. I'm there with you. It is annoying. However, I think this particular loss, and I hope maybe I've just developed some kind of Stockholm syndrome is part of a much bigger, far more engaging storyline, which is this new eternal feud of Asuka versus Charlotte. And while I I, I was done with Becky versus Charlotte, I think this one actually has a lot of potential because the in-ring matches have been fantastic so far, and I want to see Asuka beat Charlotte. I would recommend checking out the November episode of Raw where Asuka beat Charlotte. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to get that out there right away because I, i'm pretty sure someone has already sent it as a super chat i'm sure it was left on comments in your uh news video louis dangor got in touch with me to say ollie's an absolute idiot face <laughs> and he needs to actually watch these shows he's such a fool i don't know why he's in charge also he smells um i'm paraphrasing that ever so slightly i concur um, is the worst <laughs> thing i'm a self-hating man <laughs> and, and you know i i'm all for like an Asuka versus Flair feud. I think the only reason I'm a bit down on Charlotte at the moment is because I felt like her NXT run just didn't do anything. And there was so much promise for it. Like I was, you know, I was one of the guys that at the start of that, when she won, I was hoping that she was going to win at WrestleMania because I think her winning at WrestleMania was actually way more important than Rhea winning because you can have Charlotte win, go on a dominating run in NXT as women's champion, and then Rhea can beat her for the belt again, which will actually mean more for Rhea down the line. But that's not what happened. In the end, Charlotte won the belt, didn't really do a lot with it, and then just has given it, and now Io Shirai is the champion, and she didn't even pin Charlotte off the back of it. And Triple H said in the NXT conference, hey, her NXT run is going to make so much more sense in three to four months' time. And I'm like, well, by the looks of this Raw, she's done with NXT, and she's just back on Raw now, and she's facing Asuka. And I don't think it helped that She was just on every show and like she didn't need to be on Raw and on SmackDown as well as NXT. Like it's an overexposure problem, I think, for Charlotte. I think if Flair had won the belt for NXT in NXT and she went to NXT and just, you know, stayed there and defended the belt and whatnot and did something with it and then came back to start this feud with Asuka, I don't think people would be quite as annoyed as they are for this because, you know, Flair versus Asuka can be a really, really good feud because the matches they have are excellent. But it also, I think everyone's just really into Asuka at the moment and they're not into Charlotte Flair because of the overexposure 
and it's making people resent the feud. I, I think that'd be the, the way to put it. People resent the fact that Flair's just once again in a title picture after just dropping it. Like I made the joke uh, on our prediction video that's going up later that Asker and Charlotte are going to win the women's tag titles and that will feud their fuel going into SummerSlam and whatnot. And then, yeah, I'm also, the other thing I would say is I'm not a fan of pinning the champion a week before she has a title defense or pinning a tag team that's challenging for the tag belts um, a week before them going for the, I, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not down for that either. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's an awkward one with Charlotte because I totally agree. She is overexposed, you know, having her on NXT SmackDown and Raw way too much. And the, the one thing I really agree with all the criticism I've read is how much Charlotte took of this main event with Asuka. 30-minute yeah. main event with the women, I d which I, you know, I loved. I really enjoyed the match. But, yes, if you are telling this story where Asuka can hang with Charlotte, oh, but she was just cheated at the end because Nia Jax came out to distract her, you need to give Asuka some more in in the back and forth. It was it was predominantly Charlotte. So to answer the the overall question, does WWE have a Charlotte Flair problem? I think quite obviously so. She won this January's Royal Rumble because the reports were from Dave Meltzer, she had been promised other things. And, you know, that there's a bit of, ah, uh, we've got to give her something eventually, even though she wasn't the right person to win. What's happened to Shayna Baszler as well? There's yeah. a number of other women on Raw who are deserving of a shot now. Shayna's one of them. Uh, I really like Liv Morgan, but unfortunately she hasn't really shown me anything beyond, well, Beyond her riot squad run, I guess, <laughs> but for her to be in this picture. But Bianca Belair was another call up. I I really really like um, a Ruby Riot. I know that she would require a lot more rebuilding, but I think she's terrific in the ring. Uh, so Charlotte is sort of keeping all those people at a level. So yeah, maybe it's because, like you said, Charlotte has been put in this title picture so soon. Because I think even though it wasn't explicitly told, the depressing outward projection of this is, yeah, Asuka beats Nia Jax this Sunday. That's just a tiny part in this larger feud with Charlotte. And WWE can tell the story that Asuka finally overcomes Charlotte, even though, yes, she did win back in November. And that can be the big moment of jubilation i i think maybe it's because the matches between them have been so good that for two weeks in a row now i i actually don't mind that uh, and i really i thought there was a bit of interplay backstage where, where charlotte said to Asuka, do you take anything seriously and Asuka went yeah and slapped her across the face i want to see more of that i want to see charlotte get a receipt every now and again so yes yeah. wwe does have a charlotte problem but I think maybe Asuka can be the one to finally bring the queen back down. I'm going to I'm going to agree with you there, but I'm just going to slightly amend this. WWE has a WWE problem. Yes. <laughs> the because like the the other thing is like none of this is Charlotte's fault really. Like mm. the, the reports are that she was doing a lot of complaining that she was promised a lot of things, but in the end, that's kind of WWE's fault that they promised a lot of things and then never delivered on them. So they're the ones who booked her to win the Royal Rumble. They're the ones who booked her to win the NXT Championship. They're the <clears> ones who booked her to do very little in NXT. They're the ones who booked her to not put over Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. They're the ones who are booking her into this Charlotte feud. And they're like they're the ones who chose to put her on all the shows, which is now making us as fans kind of resent her being on all the shows. In the same mold, the, I I I hate this Randy Orton Edge match. Like I hate yeah. it. I absolutely hate it. And it's because WWE have been very bad at promoting it. They've promoted it to make me not want to see it, which is the opposite of promotion. And that's what they've done with Charlotte. I, I think Charlotte's one of the best wrestlers they have in this in this company. She's incredible. Like, you know, that, that triple threat match uh, on NXT is just like one small example of how good Charlotte is. And I said to uh, Adam on the NXT review, like they had Charlotte, who's amazing, Rhea, who's amazing. But the only reason they didn't look quite as amazing is because Io Shirai's just on a completely other level to anyone else. But so she's so good and she's so good in her matches with Asuka. 
but because of this overexposure, I'm like, oh God, yeah, Charlotte. Oh God, pinning Askren. Oh God, this being in the, the women's tag match. Oh God. And that's WWE's fault that they've made me not like someone who's really, really good. Yeah, I, you can see that through <clears throat> the course of the company. Triple H's reign of terror, John Cena, Roman Reigns. They latch on to these people who are very good. And they but they push them so hard down our throats that we kind of lose sight of that and just start calling them rubbish, which which they definitely aren't. It's just because there's too much of them. Should we see what the the, the very lively s s s Super Chat section has to say on this matter? Indeed, yes. Uh, and as a reminder as well to everyone who is in the chat, let's all support each other. Let's all just let's be nice to each other. You know, we've all got differing opinions on this. And we all as as human beings, we all have different opinions. But it's important to respect other people's opinions. And if you want to have, you know, uh, disagreements and arguments over this, absolutely feel fine. That's what discourse is all for. But at least be friendly about it. Let's not let's not be dicks. Shut up, Luke. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, remember, we're talking about WWE presenting a character here. We're not talking about the actual person. So frame your criticism properly and justly. Uh, Ket says, there's three things guaranteed in life. Death, taxes and Charlotte Flair dominating the women's division. Um, a string of Japanese or Chinese kanji characters, I don't know that name, says Asuka has already beaten Charlotte in a one-on-one -on -one match. See the November 25th, 2019 Raw. I guess WWE forgot this. Ah, no, they want you to have forgotten about this, which in fairness, I had. Yes, but like, so, the, so the commentary can say, you know, you know <clears> like, Triple H versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania 20, whichever one it was, the first one before they did the Hell in a Cell match, was heavily promoted as WWE as a first time ever WrestleMania match. They'd wrestled at WrestleMania. Like, it's not hard to find, but that's the narrative that they wanted. And that's the narrative that's in here. They want you to have forgotten that Raw match. Mm. Uh, Jobber JJ 496 Hello, boys. Two questions. Who was in control of Charlotte's booking while she was on NXT? And when was the decision for IO to win? EO. EO, sorry. Um, he, my guess, my guess on this is that it's Becky's pregnancy has changed plans. That's kind of my sort of feeling on it. So, yeah. So, I guess when was the decision? Probably once Becky has made her announcement and they had to change all of their raw plans. That'd be my, that'd be my guess on things. Yeah, Vince just comes in. Sorry, bigger things needed for. You, you, you're all equal brands, but yeah, we need you on Raw, Charlotte. Uh, Jobber JJ again, who says WWE buries WCW. Charlotte is invading WWE. Long live the alliance. The invasion is still happening. Long-term booking at its best. So are we saying that Charlotte is WCW <laughs> in this scenario? I think maybe because of the Ric Flair connections, I suppose. Uh, Valid Mama de Pudi, Charlotte Flair has a WWE problem. The scale goes exposure, overexposure, mid-card vortex, Omni Flair. She's not a Band-Aid fix for booking issues. Very that's how, well put. That expertly put. But that's kind of how they see her is just like, uh-oh, we've lost... This, the one person that we've built this entire Raw Women's Division around for the last year, I guess go back to Charlotte. Exactly. You know, which, which, isn't the, which isn't a particularly wrong move because she's so good. So yeah, she probably is the right person to pick. I just don't think they've gone about it the right way. Yeah. James Cruz. Charlotte should start facing the men. She has no more competition in the Women's Division. No, not all men. Uh, so I that, that she did an interview the other day where she said she'd like to win a men's championship. I think that's just, you know, something to say in an interview. I don't I don't think we should take that seriously. But uh, no, I don't think she should face any of the guys. They, WWE have clearly created gender divides and, you know, it would be weird for it to start happening now. Unlike Lucha Underground, who from the start position them more as superhero characters where the sort of strength disparity wasn't so great. New Punk rants, can we be Flair? Vince probably saw Tessa as Impact Champ and always and has always wanted to copy them. WWE is TNA ROH. With WCW writing, they can't build stars. I would hazard it. I would put money <laughs> down that Vince has no idea who Tessa Blanchard is. He might because of Tully. No, I, I'm, I'm even saying them. And I, I bear in mind, Tessa has been with WWE, like she was in NXT, and mm. I would still wager that WWE don't know who she is or that she's Impact Champion. Yeah, and Vince, Vince watching Impact, I, 
It's Vince doesn't even, <laughs> he doesn't even watch NXT. <laughs> and, it, and it's his. We'll just do a few more because we've had a load of Charlotte thoughts. Jordan 92, Charlotte only ever puts over the other four horsewomen. Hmm. I'd yeah, have to go I've, back and check. Yeah, but yeah. That's, that's a, I, you know, that's sort of the old fashioned clique ways, isn't it? You only put each hmm. other over. Yeah. And and they've they've made a good go of it, so maybe that isn't the best, the, the not the worst idea. New Punk rants again. The problem is McMahon being Russo level bad and stifling its future by overpushing and being the antithesis to good wrestling and storylines. He's rubbish. Yeah, I I mean I'm I'm gonna have to disagree again. New Punk rants. I think it's quite hyperbolic to say that McMahon is Russo levels of bad like that. That's like Io Shirai being another level of good, like that. Like Russo is another level of bad. Yeah, yeah. Like because Vince, so much. Vince McMahon has not killed WWE, and like Vince, like and Vince Russo has killed multiple companies. Yeah, uh, Ben Isaacs. Charlotte is the new Roman Reigns in terms of push. In fairness, people have been saying that for years. Yep, yep. That's. Uh, I, I I'd say that that's a really good comparison though, because mm. that's how. Yeah, now that Roman's gone. And Becky's gone as well, I suppose. They've doubled down on Charlotte almost. And the Ambrose Asylum, enough with Charlotte. Feed her to 205 Live or NXT UK. Crikey. I do. Let's be realistic, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that's a joke, but what, what good would that even do of having Charlotte put over someone from 205 Live? It, it would, they'd just get cut out. In a three-week yeah. push. Before um, we get on, before we get to the show, I just wanted to read this one out from uh, the Mayor of Paintsville, <coughs> Dan, over on our support uh, channel, uh, which is rustalk.com forward slash support to get some chats in there. He says, "Hello, guys. First of all, let's be respectful. Hashtag support each other. Um, having Charlotte Flair wrestle so much doesn't that increase the risk of injury? Imagine if Flair gets injured at this point, they would have lost both Flair and Lynch." Well, it's not like she's wrestling anymore. If anything, she's wrestling much less than usual because they're not—they haven't got a house show circuit. Mm. So, yeah, it's—it's it's not a wrestlers would always probably wrestle the same amount of times. It's just about how they're presented on TV. That's the issue here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, before we get on with the full play-by-play, -play, it's Tuesday. It's new T-shirt Tuesday, folks. Oh yeah. The new Lariat design is on WrestleTalkMerch.com. Get yours now. Hey, Luke, Lariat. Yes, Lariat. What is Lariat? Lariat is a clothes line. It's Japanese for clothes line. It's a clothes line. Get it? It's a merchandise range. This is yeah. incredible. The puns. Genius. It's genius. <laughs> oh, I love it. Do you know... When this was first pitched to us, I was like, oh, it's a cool design. I really like it. Japanese. Let's, let's put it on the website. It honestly took me about three months before I went to clothesline. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually it was during our uh, the merch shoot that we did where the guy explained it. He was like, yeah, it's a clothesline. I was like, yeah, 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 it's a Japanese clothesline. He's like, yeah, it's a clothes. And I'm like, oh, right. Yeah, penny dropped. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Anyway, go over to WrestleTalkMerch.com there if you want to support us and get something back yourself like this cool wrestling attire. Go over there. We've also got a Pile Drive COVID-19 shirt. There's some Jam That Jam action, PFK fans, the WrestleTalk Classic logo, everything. We're trying to build up the merch side because, oh boy, the future is uncertain and scary. We need to diversify. Uh, so, the opening of Raw kicked off with, yeah, the women's segment of Asuka coming out. And then she was interrupted by Bailey and Sasha, who, because they're women's tag team champs, they can float between brands now. This wasn't a cross-brand invitational. Has that been dropped? Well, we haven't had anyone from SmackDown for a couple of weeks now. So I, maybe that. Uh, yeah, I'd actually forgotten about that thing. Maybe that has been dropped. We haven't really heard of it much for a while. There was Baron against yeah. Drew. I can't remember if Charlotte Flair versus... That was one, because Charlotte went on to, to face Bailey as technically a Raw star, but also representing NXT, went to SmackDown to face Bailey. They realized they needed AJ more than four appearances, so they just moved him. That's right, yeah. So his wasn't an invitational. He just went. What are the rules? 
What are the rules? I don't know. So they're all out there, and then Charlotte comes out, and then the Iconics come out, and we set up this little three-way tag uh, where Charlotte and Asuka have to tag together. I thought initially, oh, no, we're not getting the match between them that was booked. This is so WWE. So I was actually quite happy when we got it later on in the night as the main event. Yeah, uh, and you know there was a lot of confusion around the match because some parts of WWE announced it was a title match and other parts announced it wasn't a title match. Yeah, um, which I, I said this in the NXT review yesterday. To me, it's either the left hand doesn't know what didn't know what the right hand was doing. There was just some miscommunication, or a decision hadn't actually been made up until the show itself. Yeah, because this was live, wasn't it? This yeah. is the that they're in another. They're doing fortnightly batch tapings. This week's Raw's live. Next week's Raw would be filmed, uh, like right now, I guess. Yeah. With that poor NXT crowd. Mm. Oh, I feel for them. But this was a good match. Um, I I thought it zipped along quite nicely. The Iconics are there. That they're, they're fine. They got they got beat. Or did they get beat? Or Sasha? They, they, no, they did get beat. Which is why yeah. I was like, I, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of pinning people and then them just getting a title shot. Like, and they announced they're getting a title shot and then got beaten. So mm. it's like, well, how are you now title contenders? Because you've just been beaten by someone who's not even an established tag team. So that, that I wasn't keen on. Uh, but the idea was Charlotte wasn't tagging in Asuka. Asuka gets him, runs wild, wins. Charlotte attacks her afterwards, sets up the main event. Uh, then we got probably, this wasn't bad. I just thought it was a bit fillery based yeah. on all the fantastic stuff that Rollins has been doing so far. And that was, it's Rey Mysterio's latest I'm retiring uh, interview from a remote location. Seth Rollins comes out to join the commentary desk and interview him. And it just turns into a back and forth between them. And then into a match with Murphy and Black versus Murphy and Theory. It, um, there's a lot of people said when Seth Rollins changed his music, a lot of people said, that's just Bailey's music. And you don't really notice it until they're both on the same show and in back to back segments, you're like, oh, yeah, it is the same music. I think they've probably just got an asset that says <laughs> egotistical delusional heel and they just yeah, yeah. drop it in at the start of the. It's good time. Uh, my other favorite part of this is when Seth Rollins, because I've written here, Bailey comes out again. Oh, no, wait, that's Seth Rollins. Uh, <laughs> he wants to be part of the interview with Ray, and he sits down and speaks to Ray, and Ray just goes, son of a bitch. <laughs> he made me chuckle. It was proper sort of 90s, bad wooden acting action movie. Son, son of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I, I misspoke, by the way. It was Alistair Black and Umberto Carrillo taking on Murphy in theory. Alistair Black launched himself at Seth Rollins over the announcer's <laughs> table for, for and which made Seth disintegrate. He wasn't at ringside for the match either. Yeah, he Thanos to backstage. Mm. Uh, and then, yeah, Black, Black and Murphy are just a joy to watch in the ring together. But ultimately, this wasn't their, the point of it. Uh, Black wins relatively quickly, pinning Buddy. And then the heels beat down the faces. I found this very repetitive on previous weeks. And yeah. it's not like they've got a match to build to this Sunday. I expect something will be added. But as a go-home thing, this didn't, didn't progress anything. Yeah, I don't I think this really did uh, a whole lot uh, to this. So I've seen a lot of people be very high on the next segment, which was technically the go-home segment for the biggest match ever, the best wrestling match of all time, where it was Christian... Oh, my God, it's been deleted. Edge. It's been deleted off our back end, the greatest match there. Ah, Pete. It's too awesome. Uh, Christian was hosting Edge in an edition of the peep show yeah um i i, I mean as i said earlier, I, i'm kind of i'm done with this match i'm done with this feud and if anything i just think this feud is going to continue and i guess and it is it, it's also changed now somewhat like you know the the, feud, the promos they were cutting on each other in the lead up to backlash were the same as the ones they were cutting in the lead up to wrestlemania but now all of a sudden it's about how Edge is feeling the pressure of having the greatest. And it suddenly takes away. like, well, are they performers then? Is this really a hated rivalry? Because if it's a real hated rivalry, do you want to go out there and be like, well, I mean, I hate you, but really let's work together to have the greatest wrestling match because that's what matters. 
So it, it kind of muddles the message a little bit. And then it doesn't, I don't know what the feud's about anymore. Yeah, he started feuding with the marketing department. That's what <laughs> happened. He's not building a feud with Randy Orton in this segment. No. Look, every, everything, Randy's promo that interrupted them was really, really well delivered. Edge's performance here, fantastic. Like the man has taken on this extra level of gravitas since he's come back from living in the sea or wherever he got that cool beard from. But there's there's nothing here. They're now building a feud, yeah, with the concept of having the greatest wrestling match ever. So there's nothing real tangible or personal to hook into. And it does really expose the performative aspect of this, which we don't want to be reminded of when we try to believe in it. Six months ago, less than six months ago, Edge has returned to WWE after, you know, nine and a half years. The most excited I was at the Royal Rumble, like, uh, you know, and Drew won the bloody Royal Rumble. But I'm like, oh, my God, Edge is back. Cannot wait for this. And five months time, they've made me hate a match that he's a part of. That's that's quite impressive. Yeah. Plus, Christian was out there. This is your go home segment. Christian's out there. And he did not get stomped into the mat. Not yeah. stomped, punted. That's the one I wanted. Like, the, the, what was the point of this? There was no real, real cliffhanger ending. All that happened was Randy said on the Titan Tron, the redemption of Edge is over. And then Edge said, no, it's not. <laughs> like, that, that was honestly the ending. Yeah. I, I I I didn't like it. The promo works great and everything, but like it, it's, I I don't really know what this feud's about anymore. MVP was wearing a Shad Gaspard T-shirt backstage. Really, that just, MVP has been awesome since he came back. Like yeah. even that match with Rey Mysterio, do you remember? And mm -hmm. Rey Mysterio kind of knocked himself out. I think that wasn't MVP's fault. Like he's so he's so good in all these things, uh, but. Uh, He's talking to Charlie Caruso. Our truth does our truth comedy stuff backstage. Lashley master locks him out and they walk off. Not even thinking to win the 24 7 title because it's a joke. I honestly thought this was going to lead to a match between the two of them. And I was like, this is the real feud here. It's because, like Lashley and Truth having this never ending war of matches. Speaking of never ending, anything you can do. WWE can do week after week and drive it into the ground. We got the next installment of Street Profits versus the Viking Raiders in a decathlon. So they could do not just one thing, they could do 10 things. Things like flip cup, sword fighting, dance offs. Archery. And they still tied. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. Like the the ladies find Hanson, um, they find Hanson Hanson. Ivar. I never remember. I I, <laughs> I I honestly tried to make an effort this week to write write down those names, and I did it, and then I think I got it wrong, and I was like, I'm just going to call them Hanson a row because I can remember those ones. Yeah. Okay. So the women think that Ivar is handsome and Row is not, and 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 that's it. Like that. That's the gag. Like, that's the joke of all of this. It's not. No, no, there's plenty more jokes. Turkey legs. Smoke. <laughs> that, that there is a string of weirdly recurring, pretty much unconnected visual gags that are funny. Like, I don't hate this, but they have no substance. And it's just week after week after week. I don't know where this is going. I don't want to see them have a fight. However... They did have a match later on with Bobby Lashley and MVP. And I felt more of the Viking Raiders. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, in the same way that when they first did Carpool Karaoke, you were like, well, at least now they've got some semblance of character <laughs> to them, which is true. Um, but they also lost. And Street Profits effectively lost last week to, to Lashley and MVP. So now it's a feud between losers over tag belts which doesn't invest me in their matches either i don't think the money is in them having a match for a long time i think they develop a sort of oddball bromance between the two teams which is like quite a nice odd couple pairing the viking raiders and the street profits they're so different but 
then they turn on each other later down the line. I think that could be a really cool story. My question to you then is, who feuds for the tag titles? I guess you've got Andrade and Garza, but they're kind of tied up. Hey, Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink. (laughs) Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, their three-week push is, is due a comeback. I feel like AEW have just signed everyone, all the good tag teams. I mean, SmackDown's got a pretty good tag division. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Raw's, Raw's tag division has just kind of been, well, stuck in ridiculous comedy skits that are sometimes funny, sometimes annoying, but all borderline incomprehensible. Uh, mm-hmm. After that, we got Andrade beating, actually, Kevin Owens and Angel Garza in, in a three-way for the number one contendership for the US title to face Apollo Crews this Sunday at Backlash. I thought Apollo was going to choose someone every week to fight. Did I make that up in my head? No, but they didn't, they didn't explicitly say that. I think we inferred that, which is on us. They didn't explicitly say that's what was going to happen. But he did come out here to say, like, I'm going to watch my number one contender get crowned. And then he walked away and watched on a TV. I'm like, could have just stayed there, mate. Yeah. Uh, And and, and watched it there, actually. Would have been a better view. Um, But yeah, it's so they they were using this to crown a number one contender. There was some infighting between Gaza and Andrade because they're heels and always forget that, uh, you know, one of them, only one of them can win. Um, also, fun fact for you, this was um, uh, reposted on Twitter by Louis, um, who said, uh, this is from Peyton Wesner, stat of the day, counting tonight, Angel Garza is the loser in 12 of his last 16 matches. So, uh, yeah, uh, from October 23rd, however, however, from October 23rd to January 31st, Garza was on a 9-2 record. So he was actually on a massive winning streak. However, <laughs> since uh, February, has lost 16, uh, 12 of his last 16 matches. Well, that's when he was called up. Yes, that was yes, the three-week yeah. push. Oh, dear. So, I mean, it, it's a testament, though, to how charismatic Gaza is, that I don't actually sit... Like, I, I'm not looking at Gaza thinking he's a loser, he loses all the time. I'm it's actually more Sammy. thinking... Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I thought this, I really enjoyed the last third of this match when all three guys started trying to wrestle. I just, the, the way they got to Andrade and Garza's dissension frustrated me because if I'm to believe in Vega, Garza, Andrade as an actual faction, they need to come into this match with a game plan, not, huh, why are you making the pin right now? I thought I was going to win. Oh, I thought I was going to win. It's such a lazy way to tell a heel heel story in a triple threat. I think they're splitting this team up. No! like Because they both knocked down, well, they accidentally knocked down Vega, all of this, and then they're arguing backstage and Vega shouts at them. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if they're going to split this team up. Yeah. I, I, there's so many groups that just feel like they're, destined to be broken up at the moment so potentially i will uh, say but, though, like what was great about this is when gaza and andrade did actually get down to doing their wrestling each other but it was wicked it was amazing started overhand chopping each oh, other's chest it was brilliant so good. and there was a cannonball run with uh kevin owens into both of them oh my god there was this amazing bit where gaza and andrade were working over kevin owens for ages at the start and i think andrade has kevin owens in some kind of sat down abdominal stretch or a headlock and gaza puts his head and legs in between the inside of kevin owens's feet like he's sitting down like a teddy bear and he's stretching out the abductor groin area i've never (laughs) seen that in WWE, at least, I thought it was such a just just an interesting bit of technical wrestling. I I love that. I've never heard abductor groin area said on this podcast. I believe I'm right. I think that abductors are the the ones in you know in the middle, and the adductors are the ones on the outside, the sort of muscles that hinge your legs laterally. Mm. I'm trying to learn how to do the split. It's not going well. It's one of my lockdown pursuits. <laughs> the baking's uh, going well then. Hey, I, d- I mean, I did hear the oven going, like being clattered around. And I was thinking, oh, is he baking today? I screwed up the timings. My loaf was finished at five past three. <laughs> do you, know, you want to, do you want to carry on talking about bits? And I'll, I haven't seen how it looks yet. I could, I could debut it on the show. I mean, so visual for an audio medium, but yes, absolutely do it. It's predominantly video. 
um not renee uh interviewed charlotte flair uh flair did say that she um she did not lose the nxt title because she wasn't pinned and said that she accomplished her but this is where she said she accomplished her goal in nxt which makes me think that she is done with that brand now because she main evented NXT and now she's main eventing Raw. And this is where we had Asuka come in and dance around her and Flair said, do you not take anything seriously? Asuka slapped her and said, yes, I thought it was actually really, really good. I enjoyed this. Uh, and then Kurt Angle read off an auto cue about great matches. And he says that the greatest match ever is a lot of pressure, kind of reaffirming that Edge is currently feuding with the uh, marketing department. But he picked Edge because he's a fellow Hall of Famer, which I guess is as good a reason as any. Uh, and then we had the Viking Raiders into, uh, talk to Drew and says they're going to have a party tonight with turkey legs, which Hanson which I've written in my notes here, Hanson, Ivar apparently was very excited about. Uh, everyone's very excited to see the bread in the chats. Cameron Christie says, bread, bread, bread. Walt John, get that bread. The big guy, we want the bread. Um, <laughs> Mod Mother, now this is long-term booking, the bread. Is everyone Oh, everyone, it, it's, got, it's gotten over, mate. It's gotten over. Show, it, show me the money. This is the greatest bread. <gasps> oh, hello, mate. Oh, it's looking good. Oh, that looks cr that looks crusty. That looks crispy and crusty. I like it. I'm tipping flour everywhere. Can you see the contours? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice, mates. <laughs> it's quite hard to get around my background, so I'll just have it next to me. <laughs> um, Ooh, I was just talking about it uh, nicely. <laughs> Do you have a um, title of your wrestling pay-per-view? Um, do you have any thoughts on the Kurt Angle uh, promo? Uh, well, I said in my review, it, it seemed WWE had one of his many sons taken hostage behind the camera. He read this with all... It, it was, yeah, it was very robotic and wooden. Hello, I'm Olympic male winner Kurt Angle. I've had some great matches in my time. And this Sunday at Backlash will be the greatest wrestling match ever. You know, with Undertaker, and it, it was very, very lovely scripted. Yeah, he's still technically on the 90-day non-compete payroll. So if he's about, they're certainly getting the use of him, aren't they? Uh, I will move on. We got Drew talking to the Viking Raiders backstage, which kind of, it makes a lot of sense in my head. The Scots and the, the Vikings from Norway, you know, they're very... Mm. They're very close, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a fun little partnership. Mm. Um, then we got MVP's VIP lounge with Bobby Lashley. MVP, fantastic on the mic. He's hyping, bringing out all these accolades. One of the most gifted athletes he's ever seen, once in a generation. And then out comes Drew McIntyre, and Drew just says, you forgot WWE champion. Just very. He's so, so good. And it's a credit to how good MVP is that I buy him as Lashley's manager and someone who is, you know, completely, completely rejuvenating this man's career. When Drew said something to MVP, the made me go like, huh, God, yeah, maybe MVP is a big rubbish and you are going to beat him, which is when he said like, what even is your role? Are you Lashley's Yoda giving him advice about the zero titles you've won? And I'm like, oh, you're right. He is rubbish. Beat him, Drew. It's just, yeah, giving Drew these really credible lines. So he's not just credible in the ring, but on the mic. He's he's a smart character. He's not just like this dumb baby face who keeps getting tricked into situations. He can both think and beat his way out, which is, it's awesome. I am, I am loving McIntyre. And the way I think MVP and Drew in the ring is just the, the way they talk to each other. They It's very naturalistic and, and yeah. cool. Uh, but the way they made this match just as much about Claymore versus Full Nelson, as well as the people, I, r I really appreciated that. Yeah, I r I'm, they've done a really good job of getting the master lock over, considering it's a move I've never particularly bought into. Um, yeah, they've really they've managed to get it over. Yeah. Uh, so this led into the Lashley MVP match against the Street, not the Street Profits, the Viking Raiders. But the Street Profits did come out to cheer on at ringside because they're busy mates now. Yeah. Uh, and it was, you know, it's a good match. And uh, Lashley <laughs> MVP won. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of because considering the Viking Raiders are in theory, the number one contenders to the tag titles being 
beaten by sort of a non-tag team doesn't sit particularly well with me. Um, but, you know, at the same time, the, the real biggest story about this is Lashley versus Drew. And that was shown right at the end of the match where Lashley had the full Nelson on. Drew hit him with the Claymore. But Lashley was still standing at the end of it. The commentators was like, how is Lashley still standing? Which is good because you're building to their match at Backlash. I, yeah, and everyone's gone down to the Claymore hard, you know, and very fast for the last few months. So I I really, really like that as a go-home twist to the mm-hmm. match uh, on, on uh, Backlash. I think they could have done more. I think this could have that they could have done that in a more cliffhangery way. So the the execution wasn't perfect, but I like the idea. Also in this, it cuts backstage mid-match to Lana talking to Charlie, saying that, oh, I realized that I can put these problems behind us. I'm going to support my husband, Bobby. She is the worst thing about this feud. Yes, and she is totally getting involved in this Sunday's match, most likely costing Bobby it. Yeah. And then the main event was Asuka versus Charlotte that we've already kind of covered. Terrific main event. Banks and Bailey were out on commentary. The Iconics were in the crowd behind the plexiglass. Uh, Charlotte hit a moon sold off of the barricade plexiglass area. Uh, yeah, really, really, really liked it. Oh, that, that's it. There was this amazing Charlotte spear into an Asuka double knees counter. Caught oh. her right in the face as well. Um, yeah, I mean, my criticism about this match, I've kind of we've already touched upon, which is that like Charlotte Flair took ninety five percent of the match, and I, I don't really, I it didn't make Asuka look like a credible threat, which I think is an error. But yeah, mm. that's the end, yeah. that's the only reason I didn't particularly like the main events. The the work they do together is very good, but it did feel like as soon as Asuka was making some form of a comeback, as like Charlotte just shut her right back down again, which isn't great. Yeah, I totally agree. But um, overall, I thought it was a pretty decent Raw, but it was a go-home episode and standards should be higher. So I'd put th- I gave this an average. I- I'm going to give it an average as well, only because it was thing- like being the champion just before her title defense, I'm not keen on. And that's the other side of it as well. I don't want this to come across as just like, oh, Charlotte was given too much. It's because Asuka's the champion. She's defended the title on Sunday. And like, they just essentially effectively made their women's champion look a bit rubbish going into a title shot, which isn't, well, you know, a, a title defense, which isn't great. Um, yeah. And, you know, like pinning number one contenders and, and things like that. There was a lot of stuff in it that I wasn't hugely keen on creatively, but the show was fine. Shall we do a... Uh... Pledge Hammer Patreon shout outs. Yes, we are. You wonderful $25 a month or more backers. We've actually got quite a few people watching us compared to normal. We've got 2,000 people watching us right now. And remember, we're doing this every Tuesday and Thursday. Join in. Come it's back it. every Tuesday at this time. It's because we're now at that 10,000 follower on Instagram. And now people have been swiping up into it. Shed off a story. I do stories now. I'm all about the IG. We are influencers, <laughs> uh, but we couldn't do it without you wonderful pledge hammers on Patreon. We'll get to all your su- 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 super chats after these. Thanks to Yo Adrian Rocky. Whoa. Very nice. Pick him up. Loot sponge. Thank you. The man who wears the gold, the man recognized by the SWAF Nation International as the 24 7 champion, our legend. Very nice. The old codger, Dodgy Roger. Ooh. Dodgy Roger. Nip it in the bud. Nip a be go. Oh, yes. This one's quite uh, relevant considering Randy Orton's leg slap conversation. Dot, 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 dive. Dylan Cachetta. I gave you a, an arm slap instead. Michael Plowman. That's his name. That name again is Michael Plowman. Very nice. Simpsons is now available in 4.3 on Disney+, Plus, but you've got to do it in a separate menu. My, <laughs> my Immortal is my favorite song, Mashy. Thank you, Mashy. The power couple, Stephen and Giovanna. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you, you all so much. In My Veins, Viper Alistair. What does it mean? What does it mean? The Notorious Aliata. Oh, he's notorious. And lastly, Chris, the Cypriot sensation, Petrow. Whoa. Oh, Cyprus. <laughs> right. Cyprus and of Hill. course, as always, thanks to our moderators. We couldn't get through these super chats without you, Tomo. 
uh, the mod mother jenna bumhead rob a magnetic field i believe they're all in there thank you all so much tomo's cat actually wanted to do the moderating today have you seen this photo I have not. No, is it in if Discord? You, yeah, if you go to the moderators tab and load it up, we can we can show it here. Okay, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go do that. I'll now. go through the super chats. So, Black Adam, Charlotte takes most of every match she's in and no sells a lot of offense. That's my disconnect. It's like she has to be the better competitor all the time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and, and again, that, that's 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 how she's booked. Like, it's not Charlotte is backstage. You know, we can presume being like, hey, this is the way I want to do it. Uh, it. Yeah, it's just that that's the way that she's booked in her matches. But then you look at other people who are booked that way, but they're like, no, I want to give this person in the ring something more. And, yeah, you know, and they go above one. and beyond. Drew, Drew is a good example. And Brock, when he's motivated. Fair Which, point. Would you like to see the cat? Yes. Mm. Oh, yeah, no. There it is. There it is. There's one of the moderators for today. <laughs> That's Tomo's Australian cat. You Caddy. can tell he's Australian because he's upside down. Yeah. Uh, Tomo, tell us what your cat's name is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe McKinnon, insert anti-Charlotte message. Yep. Brilliant. You can just copy and paste them. Ace of Mill. Charlotte and Becky were in danger of becoming, if not become, the Autumn versus Cena of the women's division before Becky got pregnant. Yeah, Autumn versus Cena. It's a feud that WWE thought we all loved. Um, yeah. You then watch the Royal Rumble, and we did not. Um, do you want to take over? I will do indeed. Uh, Run with the Hunted on the subject of Raw Brackets General um, says WWE has to know it's not going to be the greatest wrestling match ever, but it will probably forever be your top hit if you Google it. Yeah, I it's even about. That, I don't even think that'll work. No, I think it's not for us. It's for casuals who will just see what WWE have written and then go, oh, wow, must have been a good match. And they'll watch it and they'll go, it can't be. It can't be a match just cannot be uh josh says do you think bobby is uh winning would be a mistake personally i do i've predicted drew to win uh so that's josh kirsch i don't th i you know i want Drew to win i think he should win but i don't think bobby winning would be a bad idea right now i think mm. in the current climate sort of weirdly turning baby face somehow i think that could be really really cool oh guess what thomas cat's called raven <laughs> Yes, amazing. Uh, Rangers Mayhem, the crowd chanting, this is awesome and you still got it, was just sad. Clearly you can tell they're running on fumes and had no enthusiasm. So this was for the Asuka Charlotte match. I heard that as well. And I was like, it is awesome, but oh, you don't sound like you feel it. <laughs> um, someone, uh, sorry, our next one comes in from Josh Kirsch again, who says, are there any other Raw tag teams? So I've just gone to WWE personnel, the most important page uh, on Wikipedia. There's AOP, but they're out with injuries at the moment. Um, Buddy and Murphy. But, That'd be a Buddy, great... Buddy, Buddy and Murphy, you're right. Both of them. Both of them. Yeah, Brendan Vink, uh, Alexander and Ricochet. And that is it. Yep, that's it. Riddick Moss, was he part of... I mean, he was with Mojo, but Mojo's on SmackDown now, isn't he? Is he? I don't know. Yeah, he um, is. Yeah, he is. Um, Josh Kirsch says, if Bobby wins, who will be his first feud with? Lana. <laughs> yeah, I think you continue it with Drew. Um, but Brock, surely. You build yeah. to a Brock-Bobby match at SummerSlam. Frit, in terms of the possibility of being a good match, I'm actually looking forward to the women's tag match this Sunday. Yeah, same here. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah, making it a three ways made me a lot more invested than if it was a straight up uh, tag match. Hmm. Arvind Shastri says, Ollie's sore throat makes me anxious. I hope you're fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. Matthew Robinson, gotta love all the women in the opening, and I don't mind Charlotte winning as long as she beats her uh, if the title is on the line again. Yes, I hope that's what it's building to. Um, got a few more from Matthew Robinson. Got to love Asuka not taking anything seriously, but then smack Charlotte in the face. Love the attitude. And if they can stop all the competition stuff with Street Profits, I would love the Viking Raiders with Drew. I do think it works as a friendship, as a backup. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, they're not out there all the time, but they're mates. So they help each other out and then they drink to their victories with giant jugs of beer. Uh, Dwayne the Gronk Johnson. Will the new US title be an original design? 
I would assume so, yes. Yeah. Kind of like they're the new Intercontinentals, how they did. The Zornis, Triple H has said Roman winning <laughs> Roman missing would <laughs> Triple H so, also th- said Roman missing yeah. WrestleMania would make sense. That's this a good in re- point, yeah. It's in reference to uh, Charlotte's NXT run will make sense in three to four months' time. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, the Zornis. He did say that about Roman. <laughs> <laughs> ben, we've got a great angle plan. The best angle, don't worry. Ben Mann, two questions. What are your guys' thoughts on empty arena slash performance center shows? Um, I obviously prefer a crowd, but I think both companies have done very well with mm-hmm. the in-ring work. Uh, and do you think they give Lashley the belt on Sunday? I don't. I don't yeah. either. Yeah, I don't. Uh, Anik K. Jimmett. I believe Sean Ross Sapp said this was all pre-taped, which makes it worse that they couldn't decide on if it was title match or not. Oh, really? Sean said this was a taped show? Um, I don't know. He also said that Backlash was all pre-taped, but uh, I don't think that's the case either. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't have the live graphic on the episode of Raw, so... I don't know when this was filmed. New Punk rants. You telling me that the Hell in a Cell finish, the Cuck storyline, Jeff Hardy angle, burying people like Ricochet, etc., aren't Russo level bad? They profit on awful business practices despite the WCW booking. Nothing you've listed there is as bad as 2000 WCW Vince Russo booking. Absolutely none of it. I concur. Michael Dominguez, hashtag FTR. F the Raiders, then jump to AEW. Maybe if their contracts are up. Uh, Nikolai Azopardi. What happened to Ricochet? He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. How do you not have him on TV for weeks? An excellent question. An excellent question, Nikolai. Michael Dominguez. We need Shane's view of RKO. I mean, he is the best. That's right. They haven't asked Shane, have they? Mm. Uh, Gabriel Reyes. Don't know why, but I felt down after last night's Raw. Avroge. I'll correct what I said last week. I want to see Asuka definitively beat Charlotte. No green mist, lol. Love you guys. Enjoy you every day. Yeah, and you know what? And that's like... That you could run that as an angle, being like to Charlotte say, You did beat me, but you had to cheat to do it. So like rather than ignore that match, lean into it. Yeah. Uh, and then have, yeah, ask her get that big definitive win over her. Uh, Anij Imjit, uh, WWE should continue the Nickelodeon vibes from SmackDown and have Raiders and Profits compete on Nick game shows. I mean, if in your house has shown us anything is if you have a little bit of 90s nostalgia in there, people will go like, I, and I said this on yesterday's show as well. I love Gorilla Position. I think it's an incredible podcast. I think James Delo is amazing. I think that Ash Rose is great. I think Skillet is great. The first 20 minutes of their NXT review is just them talking about how great Todd Pettengill was. And he <laughs> was f- fine. Like he was just borderline fine. The 80s nostalgia has stopped. It's 2020. We're in the 90s. Look back now. Azo Smith. Bailey and Banks versus the commentators have been great. Also, can I get the number to Sasha's stylist? Because these outfits. Oh, yeah. She is. I mean, she is the blueprint. Mm. Matt Uh, Morgan. Sats Vault. So the solution was always to get Autumn pregnant. Hmm. Autumn, eh? I don't know what that I mean, means. I mean, he was chased by that sperm, wasn't he, at WrestleMania? <laughs> <laughs> Doug Savona, do you think the greatest match is going to be a cinematic match? Well, apparently they have taped this one already, haven't they? Yeah, uh, not that, that's said, yeah. Yeah, it's the report going around. And it wasn't a cinematic one. It was just a straight-up match. Uh, dances with AK-47s. Will AJ Styles comment on CM Punk's allegations of racism? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. No, mm, I've, not, I've not seen that. It was uh, sort of someone said AJ Styles has stayed quiet on Black Lives Matter during his streams and CM Mm. Punk tweeted, well, that's no surprise. I thought we all knew that. I thought we all knew for a while what's up there. So, yeah, it's it's insinuated. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I imagine AJ isn't happy. The gay community. Uh, Dylan from Cork and the subject of WrestleTalk related said, can't watch the stream live, but here's some money. Looking forward to listening to the podcast after work. Hey, Love you, Dylan from Cork and your lovely girlfriend, Ashleen. Dartrain24, please take my money. Your consistent content is a joy to watch and always leaves me feeling that's fine when I'm done watching. Yeah, that's all we ask for. We're perfectly adequate. Matt Betts, uh, first time I'm able to watch you guys live. Thank you all so much for the great content. You have made working from home bearable. P.S. Asuka kicked out. We didn't even talk about this. 
Asuka did the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior kick out where you kick out mm. just before the three count, but play it off like it was three. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Patrol Ron or Patel Ron six says, let's get Louis Dangor's Twitter followers up. You should all go follow him on Twitter. Yeah. Is it at Louis Dangor? I think the Louis Dangor. The Louis Dangor. Uh, Peter Mullins. Ollie, you fool. Share my expectations. <laughs> yes, it is the Louis Dangor. Um, Blake Carpenter. What a nice guy that he is. I know you don't. You're not aware of him. Uh, in keeping with the support other mantra, kudos to the Charlotte of WrestleTalk, Waxy Chest <laughs> Omni Davis. The waxing looked unpleasant, but you preserved, you persevered for our entertainment. So to tidy up that waxing, on Saturday, me and my lady partner wax my chest for an hour and a half, and it's still not all gone. Why didn't you just shave it? Because th then I'll have like some bits that are completely bald for ages, and other bits will have thick, bristly hairs come through. Oh, I just yeah. want it to be all the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter Mullins says, clothesline, omni-pun, Renomeka! And you too can make it rain. Get that graphic back up there, Oh, yeah, Luke. to be point. Where's the graphic gone? Where's Go and get your Lariat t-shirt at WrestleTalkMerch.com. Help support the channel. Harry Burgess. The Harry Hannibal, Harry Burgess here. Uh, love you, boys. Would you be keen to see a repeat of Survivor Series, but with current champions? So that would be... What do you mean? Well, it'd be like EO versus Asuka versus mm. Bailey. It would be, you know, the women's one. Um, Drew. They didn't do WWE versus Universal last year, did they? No, um, just did Brock versus someone. What was the intercontinental? Oh, yeah. So it'd be Keith Lee versus. Oh, we haven't got an IC champ at the moment, have we? But Keith Lee versus Apollo Crews versus AJ Styles. Potentially Star Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah. I love. Yeah, that would be a yeah. great idea. Absolutely. WWE have got some great champions right now. John Xavier, Xavier here, guys. Uh, you guys seriously are so entertaining and talented with what you do. Oh, shush. Love the news, uh, and I'll be back soon at taking out Jay Lethal for daring to call me out. See you soon. Oh, is John Xavier the, the Ring of Honor guy? I believe he is. Uh, oh, Lost oh. in Travel. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Crazy Lewis, but I've changed my name on YouTube as I'm developing my own channel. Don't be afraid. I'm no stranger. Laughing face emoji. Yes, uh, he emails in. Yes, indeed. Avind Shantri said, Ollie's sore throat makes me so anxious. We've had that one. Um, Peter Mullins, live. One of my mates is having wrestling is dumb and fake with his uh, roommate. He's asked what match should I show him? I've gone with Bucks Omega page tag. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that might be a bit too much, but I guess it's certainly quite realistic. What's like a really realistic well, grappling storyline one, if, if that's the way you want to go? I mean, Attitude Era podcast of uh, Kevin has said this before, but like when people have the wrestling is fake arguments, and it was during the um, Edge McFoley WrestleMania hardcore match that they had with the spear through the flaming table, and Kevin just turned to him and said, "Is that fake? Is it? Is the fire made out of crate paper?" <laughs> uh, Gabriel Caruso. Um, I, I mean, really, like my argument to that is just like, well, all TV is fake. Like, you know, any any TV show you watch is fake. I even, think they're even, comparing even, it to they're, those people are comparing it to sports rather than fictionalized TV. Sports though. are fake. Boxing's all rigged. UFC's um, rigged. I think, yeah, maybe go a hardcore match route. So, mm. you know what I'm going to say? Michael Orson versus. Orson versus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I mean, as well, because it's quick. It's only like six minutes, and it is six minutes of the most dangerous. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Gabriel Caruso said, I've been watching Rest Talk since around 2016, 2017, every single day. You guys are the most consistent entertainment I watch. Thank you, guys. Keep on rocking. Thank oh, you very thank much. Thank you. Keep on rocking like Code Orange, Adam Blompier's favorite band. Joseph Castro. Hey, guys. Hope you're doing well. My question is, what would be worse, listening to a Weezer album yes. or, watching, or watching a WCW pay-per-view from 2000? I'm going to do it. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Um, I mean, maybe they're talking about a late, even later Weezer albums are just like, they're they, 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 but they, they start and then they end. Like, I've got to be honest, that Weezer covers album, <laughs> I, would, I would, that is the last, it's bad, the last it? thing I would ever choose to do. <laughs> uh, Kayla Maldonado, I'd write a joke about a broken pencil, but realized it was pointless. Get the cuddly section in to react to that joke. 
And last minute, WWE game curse. Both Roman and Becky out for 2020. Yeah, well, that, that wasn't the only thing cursed about the game, was it? <laughs> no, the it entire wasn't. development. Uh, well, thank you everyone all so much for, for watching us here today. It was much higher than normal. Maybe people are interested in the Backlash Go Home episode. Remember, we are here every Tuesday reviewing Raw. We'll be back at AEW, reviewing AEW at the same time on Thursday and on Monday, reviewing Backlash. Um, and oh. we're going to be live streaming reactions to it as well. Me and Laurie are going to be staying up to watch Backlash with all of you. So do join us for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And me, Luke and Laurie have our Backlash predictions going up later today. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, we're trying to do a, a social media thing. Unlike David Starr, I'm certainly not very good at Twitter. So go and follow me at Ollie Davis, Luke. I'm at this is Luke Owen. And of course, the big one. Go and follow at WrestleTalk underscore TV. Let's get the followers up there. But for now, please click the videos that have just appeared on the screen to catch up with the latest awesome WrestleTalk things, like my WrestleTalk news video from earlier. Edge ain't happy with WWE, it seems. And give us a subscribe. I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Luke Owen. That's been my bread. <laughs> and that was wrestling. Bye. 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 Bye.